Jeffrey Reeves needs to rebound from what was a terrible season. Does everyone like basketball? With the second pick in the 1999 NBA draft, the Vancouver Grizzlies select Steve Francis from the University of this is, with the second pick, Steve Francis, the fabulously niche Vancouver Grizzlies basketball podcast where we strap in, lace up, and remember the very best moments from the NBA's very worst franchise ever. I'm Jeremy Allingham, and I'm here with the king of small towns, though not actually from a small town, Justin McElroy. How you doing, Justin? I mean, when you are born in Victoria, Vancouver seems pretty big. It's good to be here, Jeremy. Uh, (laughs) It is fun to wrap up a very disappointing season of Vancouver Grizzlies basketball. All of them are disappointing in different ways, of course. (laughs) But season two was disappointing in the idea that we were going to somehow, you know, leap off. Every team is bad in season one. We take that for a given. Totally. But season two is where things start to come together, except if you're the Vancouver Grizzlies. And as we start going into the stretch run of the second season, it's not coming together for them in many games. And it's not really coming together for them in this game. No, it ain't. It ain't pretty. Uh, Today, we're taking you back to February 21st, 1997 at the Great Western Forum in uh, Los Angeles, California. I believe that was Inglewood, actually. It's showtime, baby. The Lake Show. Uh, Lakers versus Grizzlies. This is just after the All-Star break in the 96-97 season. The Grizzlies are 11-45. and They're 2-3, and three, a respectable 2-3 and three in their last five as- after the All-Star break. Uh, a couple wins, one against Boston, one against San Antonio. The Lakers, 37-15, and 15, only 2-2 two and two since the All-Star break with wins against Denver and Minnesota. The Lakers, I could tell you about their starting lineup, but first of all, who's not playing in this game, Justin, is Shaquille O'Neal. And actually... Basically, who's not playing in this game is a dynasty in waiting. We've got (laughs) Shaquille O'Neal not playing. He had a ligament damage in his knee and wouldn't return until April. Um, We had Robert Ori. We had Derek Fisher. We had 18-year-old Kobe Bryant. Um, Fisher and Kobe, of course, being rookies that year, only playing about five minutes each. But the real uh, starting lineup for the uh, Los Angeles Lakers was Travis Knight at center, Eldon Campbell, power forward, 34-year-old Jerome Kersey uh, at small forward, Eddie Jones playing shooting guard, and Nick the Slick Van Exel at point. Yeah, you, you know, when I was a kid, I the Lakers at first were in this between dynasties era, between Magic Showtime and Shaq Kobe. And I got to say, I had a bit of a love for the Nick Van Exel, Eddie Jones backcourt, uh, a competitive team, but not one that you would call championship caliber. This was the first of the transition years. Del Harris still the coach for the Lakers at this point. But again, with Shaq not being in there, as a Grizzlies fan, you might be a little less excited to watch the game. However, if you're looking for a win, you think, you know what? Maybe against Eldon Campbell and Jerome Kersey, Reef and Reeves could do some damage inside. Uh, but for the Grizzlies, you know, the starting lineup, we've talked a lot about these guys this season. Uh, Reef and Reeves up front. Roy Rogers also in the front court. So a big front court for the Grizzlies in this game. Greg Anthony has resumed the starting point guard position. And Lawrence Moden. So we have a weird sort of two point guard situation going on there in the uh, other guard spot with them it is you know the Grizzlies have been trying a lot of different lineups during this second season trying to find a combination that works they've had some injury problems as well Peeler isn't in there uh, for this game he's on the bench to start Lynch is injured but this is a game where if you're the Grizzlies you might think well maybe there's a chance yeah and we're uh, as we tend to be in these games treated to a bit of a legendary call from the late great Chick Hearn And amazingly, on Color Call, Stu Lance, who's still calling games for the Los Angeles (laughs) Lakers and is, to me, when I'm watching NBA basketball, one of the absolute worst color commentators there are these days. He's an abject homer. He is just, there's no criticism and no critical thought that goes into his calls of Laker games. But man, this guy is stuck around and he got to tag along with Chick Hearn and Chick Hearn He's a he's a bit of a funny guy to get used to in this game, but I think he grows 
on you as you go, uh, go into the game and go through the game. Dennis down in Orlando, McLeod made 257 last year. I can't still believe it. And Shaq's there tonight. He couldn't make a three-pointer trying to make it in the ocean. Yeah. Um, remind me to tell him about. Uh, I mean, this is a guy who has called uh, 75,000 NBA games or something like that to this point. He's a legend. It's a mid-season game against a bad team. You can tell that he's sort of in third gear the entire time. You know, we get the requisite away announcer talking about him big countries out of shape at first uh, we get a few you know turns of phrases like when you get those stitches in your lip it's tough to get a date things like that but it <laughs> is you know that you get a comfort level with them and it's like a great old radio announcer that knows that you can't see what's on the court even though we are watching this on tv so he has to tell you a story he has to make you your friend that you're watching this along to and if you're the grizzlies you need a friend in this first quarter because they are not feeling it reef gets blocked not once not twice not three times but four times in the quarter we get a uh, van exel three early on he's feeling it reeves is soft in the middle there's an easy fast break two for the lakers they're up halfway through the quarter 21 to 14 and it's actually interestingly for the lakers it's travis knight in shack's stead who is dominating the Grizzlies in the opening minutes. This seems to be a bit of a pattern for us with the Grizzlies is backup centers taking it to big country. Travis Knight has a quick six points early in the first quarter. And I've got to tell you, going back to Chick Kern, like, I hate to say it, but it's very uncomfortable for me how much he loves the one white player on the Los Angeles Lakers. Like, he is immediately <laughs> gushing about Travis Knight, how tough he is, how his ankle was hurt, but look at him play through it. What, How great it is to see this kid. I mean, he's a rookie. I get it. You're allowed to get excited for these guys, but there's just this like extra love for Travis Knight that I'm like, okay. And then uh, Chick Hearn uh, also, like you said about that friendly like, I feel like he's done so many games, he barely even knows when the mic's on and off. At one point, he really loves Sharif um, because that's yes. something that that's something that they latch on to. But he really is like, he could be rookie of the year. In low, they go to Abdul Rahim, and he puts it up and in. I'll tell you, this guy is liable to be the rookie of the year. In fact, I think he could be without much doubt. Um, but then he, he, like, speaks for Sharif. And he says something along the lines of... He's a 46% field goal shooter. He's their leading scorer, averaging 18 a game. And he's talking to one of his teammates and saying, hey, come on, dumb dumb, I'll pass you the ball. You get in and play the low post. And I'm just like, okay, this is, this is loose, man. Like, this is not, you know, uh, lethal accuracy rep uh, reporting and uh, broadcasting here. Loose is a good word for it. Uh, near the end of the first, I want to point out that a bench player comes in for the Grizzlies, and we're going to mention him because he's the only Vancouver Grizzlies player from this season we haven't mentioned once in this podcast, and he goes away at the end of this season. So, hey, here's Eric Lechner, journeyman, big guy, hey. signed, to, hey, to, signed to a 10-day contract earlier in 1997, then extend it for the rest of the year. He's in there for all of two minutes and 40 seconds. He has a big, bad brick at one point. That is the Eric Lechner story for Vancouver. But a more exciting thing happens at the very end of the first, particularly, you know, if you like watching Hall of Famers in their rookie season. Yeah, Kobe Bryant, um, he, he checks in, and I was waiting to see when that would be. And it's interesting because immediately he checks in, and it's right at the end of the quarter, and Chick immediately says they love to bring in this kid at the end of shot clocks, at the end of quarters or end of games, because he can create something out of nothing, which of course is something we know that he goes on to do for his entire career. And it is wild to see the shot that he creates and hits as the first quarter comes to a close. It's vintage Kobe in his 18-year-old rookie season. All right, Kobe gets the inbound pass, five seconds left. He had 16 points against his club this year, and he makes a nice jumper for two. He's got his back to the basket, shimmy shake, turns to his right, fades with two feet on the three-point line, nothing but the bottom of the net, and you're like, whoa, that was in there. Like, And I'm thinking, why isn't this guy starting? And as you'll probably explain, there's quite a clear reason why he's not starting. It's outside of that shot. He's kind of just like a ghost, non-existent, a traveling call in the second quarter, and also like a jump pass, bad turnover. He's, he's looking really raw. 
Uh, being an 18-year-old player is always tough in the NBA, particularly in 1997. And yeah, when he doesn't have the ball in his hands, he's not really doing anything. Keep in mind, this entire rookie season, he only averages 16 minutes a game and 8 points a game. But even in this one for the against the Grizzlies, if you were hoping for the Kobe show, 5 minutes, that one shot is the only shot that he takes. 2 points one rebound and he's out of there to at the midway point of the second quarter. Yeah. He's like, he's benched as far as I can tell. Like that wasn't like, Hey, let's just throw him out there and have some fun and see what happens. Like, I think it's like, man, you're, you're not helping this team right now. And just quickly before we go on from the first quarter, I had a really good time watching Nick Van Exel uh, this quarter. He's super swaggy. He would fit in modern NBA as far as like springiness, explosiveness, handles. He's got a quick uh, trigger on the three point shot, which we know is like requisite now. But like he also would fit super well at Rucker Park or in an and one mixtape. Like he looks awesome out there and, you know, throws a couple turnovers out of bounds, but also. An incredible no look pass. Weiss comes off to the rebound of Knight. Knight gives the ball to midcourt to Van Exel. The defenders are back in the good transition. Nice pass under to Rooks. Put it in, baby, and he did. So Rooks may go for 50. So that was fun to see. The, Nick Van the, Exel the problem with Van Exel is that he was sort of portrayed and set up to be a star or your number two guy. Really, he's your energy guy, your sixth man off the bench that can be in there at the end of games to create uh, to offense. But love me some Nick Van Exel, except when he's getting 21 assists against the Grizzlies through a slightly skewed uh, way of counting the assists to set a record that day. That's another story, though. End of the first quarter. The Lakers are up 20 to 29 19 against Vancouver. Less list for the Grizzlies. Second quarter, there is the Vancouver Grizzlies beginning at down 10, and that's not the way for long. They start getting into a little bit of rhythm. We get a reef and one. We get uh, Roy Rogers' fugly bank, but it is a point. Lawrence Moden cans a long two. The sky is falling here. The Grizzlies are on a bit of a run. And the Lakers just like put on their nightcap blow out the candle and go to bed like they are hilariously out of it in the first six minutes they score four points and record five turnovers in the first six minutes of this quarter they go on to lose the quarter 26 13 uh and in a couple interesting storylines in the second quarter we have anthony peeler's return to la and the lakers we know that the reason he was moved from la not because he wasn't liked there not that because it wasn't beloved chick hearn seems to have a real soft spot for anthony peeler but it's because they needed to clear cap room for shaq o'neal and so here's peeler kind of tail between his legs seems to be fighting through some injury maybe even some sickness he talks some crap to the sideline reporter and says i'm gonna go for 50 tonight go for 50 he would not i will say <laughs> he uh looks brutal he's slow he can't defend yeah, there's something going on. And Chick Hearn just feels so bad for him. He says, like, look at that kid. He really looks sad. You know, winning, uh, I mean, losing can do that to you, Chick, uh, along with injuries and things. When you put injuries along with a, a losing season, it, it can be very, very draining. He looks thin. He looks thin in the face. And I think this whole dramatic uh, moment for Anthony Peeler, who has a really brutal return to the forum. And another return, or another reunion, I should say, is uh, yes. Byron Scott, the <laughs> seldom used, as he's described, Byron Scott, who's back out on the floor facing his former team in the Vancouver Grizzlies. And, you know, in the season where he was with the Grizzlies, he was still productive, but it was clear that he had lost a step. By this point, he's running on fumes. Uh, one for six in this game. It's funny because you can tell the fans, because he's back with the Lakers, back with the team that he's won five rings with, uh, they want to cheer him, right? Like, they are amped to really love this legend. And yet, it is just brick after brick. Not the most particular pleasing sight for either Laker fans or Grizzlies fans. But you know what is a nice return to form? It's Greg Anthony. Blue Edwards has got the ball. Edwards out in front to Anthony. He could give him the lead. His three-pointers on the way to do it, and he got it. Nice shot. Beautiful form with that left-handed shot. And the Grizzlies lead after trailing by 10. It's 43 to 42. Dribble drive in deep. Van Exel gives it over to Byron. He's in the air, and his shot is blocked. Taken away by Blue Edwards. Now the ball in front court. Dribble behind the back. Great play. Feed to Moten. Feed underneath to Anthony. And he scores five points in the last 16 seconds. 
and it's 45 42 the Lakers are behind and I would say this is embarrassing in front of their home crowd the yeah. Grizzlies are up 45 to 42 at the end of the half and it's funny Chick Hearn dumps on the Lakers as any announcer where the Grizzlies are beating them they get so disgusted when Vancouver is winning <laughs> Yeah, when he calls it embarrassing, and it kind of was. They missed four straight free throws, and G Money is, you know, he's looking like a legendary point guard out there. And I love to see G Money, like, just on the eye test, he looks a bit smooth again. He looks like he can actually move his body. Like, I don't know if it's a confidence thing or a mental thing or what it was, but maybe it's a physical thing. But, yeah, it was great to see him. He ends uh, the half with five straight points for the Grizzlies, and uh, like you said, they're up into the half on the road in L.A. It's time for the third quarter. The Grizzlies do extend their lead a little bit at the top of the third. We get a nice uh, little big country layup. We get another great Sharif first up for a layup. They're up 53-48. But then the Lakers start to get going a little bit, and it happens with their guy in the center. No, not Shaquille O'Neal. It's Eldon Campbell. Yeah, Eldon Campbell had an abject uh, first half. I believe he was one for six with two points. And he also had, he got into foul trouble early, didn't seem uh, super focused or anything like that. But he starts to bring it, and he's, he's a nice-looking player. He's big and strong in the middle. He's rebounding. He's hitting little kind of like baby fades. He's getting to the hoop and pretty much having his way with Big Country. Big Country, I would say, mounted very little resistance to the Eldon Campbell experience in the second half here. And that starts to turn it for the Lakers. It's just soft, right? And it's not great positioning. Uh, it is... This game, you know, we talk a lot about how Grizzlies games usually are not technically great, and this one is not technically great either, but it's not boring at the same time. It's pretty entertaining. No, no. And, and you know, a lot of this, again, keyed by Greg Anthony. Yeah, there was a great, and, and it's so funny that this jumped out at me because for any regular NBA franchise, like you would expect to see, you know, 8, 10, 12 really beautiful basketball plays a game, but we, we're not, you know, we're not privileged like other NBA basketball fans. But there's this great play in the third quarter where they just run a picture perfect fast break. The rebound is up and it's grabbed by Reeves. Reeves gives the ball to Anthony. Here we go to Mo. Great pass. Great pass underneath and scoring is Raheem. Oh, that was a nice play. And they stick with them here. I mean, G Money's hitting threes and it's a quarter of runs. The, the Lakers at one point go on a 12-0 run. The Grizzlies on a 7-0 run. And both teams end up shooting around 60% in the second half. So there is some office, offense here. There is some flow and, and it's it's fun basketball. Uh, the third quarter ends with a boxed alley oop by the Grizzlies, then blocked. The Lakers are up, but they're only up by two at the end of three, 72 70. Uh, the Grizzlies are to, trying to keep up, and indeed, at the beginning of the quarter, they are, and Lawrence Moden himself ties it at 80 with 7.10 left. Reef manages to force a good two. They're tied at six minutes left. But then Eddie Jones and Eldon Campbell start taking over a little bit. Yeah, this is the Eddie Jones quarter. I was definitely kind of wondering to myself, when is it going to happen? When, like, you know, is Eddie Jones kind of just flying around and not caring too much today? But uh, he starts out the quarter with one of the gawkiest floaters you'll ever see, but makes it. Campbell's out of the game, and Sean Brooks is getting some minutes tonight. Dribble drive down the middle, oh, Eddie Jones throws it up and in. He had his right arm extended with the ball in the palm as he flew through the air and just dropped it, say, six that feet down. That is a difficult shot. Oh, I'll say it. I've never seen him make that Hits shot. a three, drive and dish to Eldon. Hits another three. He kind of takes over. He plays almost the whole game. I think he plays 44 minutes in this one. And then, from Eddie, we go to the Byron Scott revenge story where he scores four straight points, his only four points in 24 minutes, <laughs> and that kind of starts to lengthen the lead. And Eldon Campbell's taken over, throws down a thunderous left-handed dunk. And with about five minutes left, you see that story that we have noticed as a pattern that the other team cranks up the defense kind of like two or three notches. And all of a sudden, the Grizzlies can't get the shots that they're hoping to get. Yeah, I'm screaming that the Grizz during this midpoint of the fourth quarter aren't doubling Campbell. I'm screaming that Campbell has five fouls and they're not giving it to country in the post totally. and trying to make something happen. He only has nine shots at the end of of the day. It is just, you know, and you it's it's part talent and it's part play calling. It is very frustrating. However, 
The Grizzlies, as is the tradition, do not completely fade away. They give us some false hope here, and it's a false hope by an ugly Reef 3 that gets it to 93-91. Oh, man, was that ugly? I mean, he, he dribbles to the left, and, I mean, it's kind of a double pump, but it's no, like, Blue Edwards ugly jumper. It was pretty nice. He, he cranks it in there, 93-91. And then this is kind of the moment that the Grizzlies – had their chance. So it goes into the post. So they, they make the three and they go back on defense and it goes into the post to Eldon Campbell. And he inexplicably just costs the ball up. He throws it up into the key and reefs there. He's the closest player and they go down, they've got possession and this is their chance to tie or go ahead. And smartly they enter the ball to reef in the post smartly by the Lakers. They triple team Sharif triple team means someone's open. He passes it across to the left side, to Lawrence Moten, who makes the good pass, quick swing to G Money. G Money's been hot. He's been four or five from three. What does he do? Pass one more time to Blue Edwards, who is not having such a good game. Blue Edwards takes like one dribble to his left hand, weird jumper, not even close, and you start to feel things deflating. It's a Blue Edward shot. It's a Vancouver Grizzlies feeling. But they do get another chance because Eddie Jones misses a three-point shot. The Grizzlies get the ball back. They're down by two with just a buck 40 left in the game. Anthony gets the ball. He's in position. And then... Wow. Dribble driver Anthony underneath. He missed the reverse layup. Oh, are the Lakers lucky. He'll make that shot 99 out of 100 times. It was a nice move. How did he miss it? I don't know how he Look at him. He still can't believe it. No. Yeah, he goes, he's he goes reverse, and it's literally, I bet you on his career, he shoots 99.3% on that shot. It's an absolute bunny. It's a gimme. Um, and he just he misses it. And we can't believe it. And I think even more so than everyone watching, Greg Anthony cannot believe it. Uh, he is pissed off with himself, even getting back on defense. He's slow. The Lakers have poured in to, to Eldon Campbell. He makes a two-point jump shot from eight feet, eating up Reeves as he has the entire game. The Grizz come back down the court. Reef misses a two-foot layup, blocked by Campbell. Reeves fouls Campbell. Campbell makes two free throws, and that pretty much is the game. Yeah, that's it. Um, the Lakers go on to win 99-91. And it is time for the three stars. Who did you have as your three stars, Justin? You know, I think uh, overall, number one, you have to give it to Eldon Campbell. Uh, 23 points. That's not a lot when you think about it, but when you consider how he just took over the game at the end of it, he ended up uh, leading all scores in the third and the fourth quarter, 21 in the second half in total. Him against Reeves was the difference in the game. Number two, you know, I do have to give it to Reef. We said it was a quiet 30 points and 11 rebounds, but that's still some good rate stats. And he was the only Grizzly, once again, really contributing offense on there. Uh, and then the third star, uh, you know, I got to give it to Eddie Jones. Five for seven from beyond the arc, really feeling it for a lot of the game, giving the Lakers the offense that they need it without Shaq in there. Yeah, okay, so... I zagged a little bit, and I put uh, Sean Rooks as the first star. Just joking. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I had uh, the exact three that you had, though I have Eddie Jones as the second star and Reef as the third star. I couldn't be quite so much of a homer this time because uh, it really was Eddie Jones and Eldon Campbell who uh, put the nails in the coffin uh, for the Grizzlies. But as you point out, they wouldn't even have been in this game without Reef's 30 points and 11 rebounds. So he gets the nod uh, because we have to give a little bit of love to our Grizzlies. But uh, no Shaq, no Kobe, no Ori, no George McLeod, and still our Grizzlies fall by eight to the Los Angeles Lakers. And they fall this game. They fall a lot in the final 20 games of the season. The Grizzlies are now in the middle of a 1-24 and 24 stretch. Oh. One win, 24 losses before winning their two of their last three games on the year to make their final record on the season. Seems somewhat defensible comparably. They still finish the season somehow with less wins than their first season from 15 to 14. We know that changes have to be made for this team. We know Greg Anthony wants out of there. We know that they need a point guard, and the draft is coming up. Surely things are going to turn around now, right, Jeremy? Right? <laughs> 
I don't even know what to say to that. And with that... This has been with the second pick, Steve Francis. I'm Jeremy Allingham for Justin McElroy. We'll be back with a special season-ending feature interview that'll wrap things up and take us onward into season three. So join us for that. I'm going high and it's